Hey folks, I guess I procrastinate just about as much or as little as anyone else, but uh, sometimes procrastination is forced on top of me. Oh, and by the way, this is not a how-to video because I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Here's the hole cut into the ceiling and you can see one edge of the box that I've built to hold the other pieces and parts. I don't know what they're called, but I've built a square box around it that ties into the um, joists up there. Uh, and if you look, you might be able to see the light where I've drilled a hole in the roof, Ugh, and that's what I've got to cut up cut into a bigger hole next pieces and parts I've got the uh, stove ring adapter decorative trim so here's this part done uh, that's in and stable I'm really happy with that okay so I'm up here in the attic <sighs> hopefully for the last time good golly so I've had to basically crab walk all the way from that end to down here where I'm putting the chimney uh, hard on the old joints let me tell you uh this this project definitely uh elevates my my planned project for uh, uh fold down attic stairs and get some plywood up here so i can actually use the attic uh but here i am hopefully the last trip and what we've got here sorry i have to shoot this really close uh here is chimney pipe so that's the very top of the assembly where we're at now. And that is one length of about three foot of chimney pipe. And this thing down here looks sort of like a, an old milk pail. Its purpose in life is to make sure no combustible material gets close to that chimney pipe. So uh, down at the bottom, I've had to actually build a box to surround this thing and to be able to mount it. Uh, next step is going upwards and I'm going to remark the hole because I had to move things around and I drilled one hole initially but I, I'm not confident in the hole so I've come back up here to shoot the laser again and, uh, and give it another go. So there's the original hole I've drilled and I've just moved it over a little bit. I, I, I didn't like the laser, I wound up using an improvised plumb bob. So uh, next thing I do, I'm going to uh, put a screw going upwards so I can find the hole outside. So I'm getting ready to go up on the roof now and do that part of it. Uh, I've got to cut the hole in the roof, install this flashing, uh, of course the chimney pipe, this is a storm collar and the cap. Now already I'm not real happy with the cap because it has no positive anti-critter control on it at all. 
So I might have to change that out later. We'll see who comes stumbling down my, my stovepipe. Uh, anyway, up to the roof. Okay, so I found my screw in the roof, but it is disturbingly really close to the ridge. Just there. A lot closer than I would have wanted. So, yeah, I'm just gonna have to make it work. Okay, so I put the flashing where it's gonna sit. I've got it right up to the edge there. Uh, I guess I'm not too unhappy with it. Again, there's my screw. I don't know if you can see it because of this lighting, but it's gonna be a little bit off kilter. Yeah, make it work. So I'm gonna take this grease pencil and just mark the inside, and that's where I'm gonna cut. All right, so there's my mark with the grease pencil. Next thing is to make a hole in the roof so I can use the sawzall. Uh, you can either do that with the back of a claw hammer or uh, the way I'm going to do it is to use a, a hole saw. That hole saw was dull as all get out. Okay, instinctively, this was the toughest part of the job for me. I did not want to cut a big dang hole in my roof. It goes against every fiber of a homeowner's being, but there I've done it. The worst is over. You can see the uh, chimney pipe in the attic. Uh, down this there. is just set in place to test it. What I had to do is pull up the top half of these shingles. Uh, it, I should say the shingles on the top half of the flashing and get up underneath there. I, I actually by hand used a sawzall blade was the easiest to sort of prime all up find the nails pull the nails another way i've i've heard that you can cut actually cut the nails with a sawzall blade uh anyway now i'm going to remove this and tar it up and put it in place uh, i put the chimney pipe on there just to fit it and see how it is uh, i need to be two inches off that pipe with any combustible material so I've got about a quarter inch there. Uh, I need to trim just a tad more to get it in safe. Okay, so I've spread, uh, I've gone just buck wild with this uh, roofing sealant here uh, and run several beads around it, more around what's going to be at the top. Uh, and now I'll go ahead and fit it into place. I got it to this point. Uh, it's all put together in place uh, got screws in that lower portion and the top half I've taken roofing tar and stuck the shingles back in and drawn a nice bead around the base there so we don't have any leakage uh, it all looks so nice and easy but you know, look at my hands there was a lot of kicking cussing uh, no blood yet thank heavens but um it was just hard to get it all, to all line up and get that flashing up under the shingles. I kept finding invisible nails that I hadn't seen earlier. Uh, plus, as I said, there's the ridge beam. So I'm really, really close. It's just making it. So let me move on to the next step. All right, the scary part is done. I've got the chimney up. Uh, Gone ahead and put caulk over all the screw heads. A little bit just right in there where the uh, this storm collar uh, meets the pipe. And then I've even taken a screw and put it into the pipe, a short screw, just to I, anchor the two I'm together. Starting with single wall chimney pipe. I, I'd like to get a telescoping double wall maybe next year. So here's the inside of the stove, uh, and what you're looking at here is fire brick. 
um, these stoves used to originally be made of cast iron and that thick heavy cast iron would hold that heat and then release it as putting the in stove the last two off. fire bricks and they actually go into the top okay we've got this large hunk of insulation this goes in on top of the top fire bricks and now I'm putting on the handles this is pretty easy just basically screw them on there okay this is the fan that I've got to install on the back uh, it operates uh, from AC power there's the insulation that goes it's basically a gasket between the stove and the fan now I have a 900 square foot house and this little stove small size stove is rated for 1200 now I know uh, when SHTF happens okay I won't have the blower anymore but uh, still it'll be well adequate to heat my house um, little adapter piece I'm gonna pull that sticker off now something I learned about stovepipe that was counterintuitive is that the stovepipe the way it sets up I'm sorry again the lighting is kind of bad but you would think that the piece that goes over that above this fits over it so it would make a good seal for the smoke but it's completely the opposite it actually nests inside because if there is any creosote you want it to drip back into the stove rather than uh, down the outside of the uh, pipe which makes a big mess so I'm just going to take the mallet first I'm going to take that sticker off then I'm going to take the mallet and put this in okay, that sticker was a bear to get off you think they'd make it with some sort of lightweight glue since they knew you were going to have to take it off you want to just sort of insert it in there and then tap it in with the mallet till it's firmly seated another thing you want to put the seam on these pipes to the rear just so it gives a nice smooth look going up uh, <clears throat> also I've heard that with some of these pipes you might need you might need to crimp them a little bit with pliers but mine seemed to go I'm right in light on uh, so that I seated that nicely with the mallet and then I'm just gonna take some uh, stovepipe screws and screw those in just to secure it you can tell I'm trying to do this one-handed so I said this is not a how-to video okay I'm assembling the stovepipe and one tip I picked up on the internet is to just take a flathead screwdriver and widen out this lip a little bit just in time because boy it's getting cold out uh, this is a big project and this went to the the outer reaches of my uh, home improvement familiarity so uh, yeah, I got to learn a lot of things from it uh, I've had some time to try out the stove get it nice and dirty uh, it draws really well uh, overall I'm pleased with it so uh, good results all around thanks for your time stay safe